Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're discussing debounce and how to create a debounce function and what a debounce function does. I'll be using vanilla JavaScript. I've got the JavaScript file open here in Visual Studio Code on the left. I've got a simple web page on the right for now that has a click me button in the middle, and I've got the Chrome console here on the far right. Now what you see is when the document loads, we look for the DOM content loaded event here and we call the init app function. The init app function looks for the button on the page with the query selector and then it adds an event listener for the click. And that event listener calls the click log function. And this click log function logs to the console clicked. Now I know that seems like a lot just to the log to the console clicked as you'll see it do right here, but I need that in place to demonstrate the debounce function. Now, debounce prevents functions from being called too soon. That's a very simple explanation of it. And really the standard example I've seen referenced frequently is clicking a button like a double click by mistake that would log two orders, like you accidentally place a second order in a shopping cart if the button is not debounced. Well, I like an example better than that, but let's go ahead and look at button behavior first. And as you notice, I clicked it and it says clicked over here. As fast as I can click it, it's going to rack up the clicks. It's not stopping me at all. So let's go ahead and construct a debounce function and see what it does to a button before I show you an even better example. Okay, let's start over here and let's just call it debounce. Now the debounce function is going to accept a function and a delay. Now, if you notice, since it accepts a function, you might be thinking about this if you've watched some of my other tutorials, in particular, the tutorial on decorators, because we are creating a decorator here. That's what debounce does. It accepts this function and it adds some more functionality to it. So the first thing we'll do is define an ID. And we don't need to assign a value to that right now. I'm going to log to the console here, the ID. And of course it will be undefined at first. So let's go ahead and put something in here so we know what we're looking at when we do see this message. So I'll just say ID at immediate load. That should work. And then we'll put the ID here. We're using template literal. And this ID at immediate load should be undefined because we're not assigning anything to it. After that, we're going to return, and now we'll have an anonymous function. And we'll spread the arguments here, and then we need the arrow. Now inside this anonymous function, we can go ahead and log, and I'll use another template literal, and I'll say previous ID. And now let's go ahead and pass the ID in once again. This will have a different value when this anonymous function is called. And that is through closure. Now, if you don't understand closure, I do have a separate tutorial on that as well. But this value right here, ID, is essentially a private variable that's only available through the debounce function. But since this function is created here, or actually returned here, it has access this ID value. And that's important as we create our debounce function. And that is a closure that is accessed or has closure over that. And again, you can get all the details on closure in my separate tutorial for that. So we're logging the previous ID attempt, but now we need to say if ID, so if we have a value for the ID, we're going to clear timeout because we're going to set a timeout. And now we pass in that ID so it knows to clear it. And now after that if statement, we'll go ahead and set ID equal to set timeout. And now set timeout will receive an anonymous function. And inside this function, we'll call the function that was passed in to begin with at the top. And of course it needs the args. And after we give it the args, then we can just provide the delay for the timeout. And that was also passed in at the beginning. So we need to break this down maybe just a little bit better, and we'll do that through some of the console log statements. But essentially, a walkthrough here before you see it in action says this will log immediately at load. So debounce will be called immediately. After that, 
it returns the handler. So then only this function will be called into action when the button is clicked. And this will be the handler. And so then we'll see the previous value of the ID. And if it has a value, we'll clear the timeout and essentially start over. We'll set the ID here and it will wait till the end of the delay value before it executes the function that we pass in. Now, what could happen is if we click too fast, this continues to reset. And only if we stop clicking for the given delay amount, will this go ahead and execute. So that's how we prevent the double click. Actually, a double click could still happen, but the response to the double click is what changes. So now we need to put the debounce into place up here in the add event listener. So here we'll call debounce immediately and it receives the function click log. And now let's give this a two second delay, which is longer than usual, but this is going to be very noticeable then with it being a two second delay. So let's go ahead and save that. And now look, ID at immediate load is undefined, as I said it would be. So debounce was called immediately at the load time when the init app was called into place. So now when we click the button, what is called into action is this anonymous function that checks the ID value and it will clear it out or it will go ahead and assign the set timeout. And then this will only call this function inside the set timeout if the delay is allowed to expire instead of being reset. So if we click too soon, we'll just continue to see the ID value, previous ID value. But if we go ahead and stop clicking, then we'll see what happens when this function is called. So let's click and click, 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 click. We just see previous ID, previous ID. And then finally, two seconds later, we see clicked. Now again, this is an advanced JavaScript concept and it's using a couple of previous concepts I've covered. So if you do not understand decorator functions or closures, it may help to go back over those tutorials and I'll link to those in the description below as well. But now let's look at something else besides a button click. And let me actually show you why I don't think the button click is the best example. Although it does work for that because notice the function that called clicked was not called until I stopped clicking and it was only called once. So it does work, but I could show you an example here without the bounce. I can go ahead and eliminate the problem of a shopping cart button being clicked on more than once. So I'll call an anonymous function here. And now inside this anonymous function, I'll go ahead and call click log. And then I'll go ahead and say button, and it has a disabled property. And I'll set that equal to true. And then I can kind of do the same thing we're doing with the bounce, but I can just set a timeout and now inside this function, the anonymous function in the timeout, I can say button.disabled, if I could spell disabled, equals false, but only after, say, two seconds. And now we'll get the same result because I can't click it more than once. I'll attempt to, I'll click, 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 and I only did it once because I could click five times within two seconds at a normal pace, and I wouldn't get that double click. So even if I try to click really fast, click, click, I just get one more click because I already had one over here. So this works as well to prevent a shopping cart button from being clicked on more than once by mistake. But now let's look at an example that is a great example of how debounce can help out. Okay, I've got my GitHub open and I'm on the create a new repository page. And here we need to provide a repository name. Now look what happens as I type and then when I stopped typing here. So I'm going to type Led Zepp is great. And then when I stopped typing, it ran a little script and it said Led Zepp is great is available. But as I type, it doesn't. And so that's what we're capable of doing with debounce. So I could put in here Led Zepp is good and it actually responds fairly quickly. So 
I don't know exactly what they're using on here, but we can accomplish this with the bounce. And I have a feeling they're using something like that. So now let's look at some more code. Okay, for another example of something very similar to what we just saw on GitHub, I've got a test project over here. It's pulling in data from JSON placeholder. And I've got all the posts from this user, Leanne Graham. We could switch users, but we'll just keep that. And all these posts are held in the state of the application. This is a vanilla JavaScript project, but you could do this with React as well. Now, we've got the document get element by ID, and I'm grabbing the filter text, which is this input over here that says filter post titles. It can actually filter the, the post body as well. So I should probably change that. But what happens is we're passing in this anonymous function to debounce. And you can see right here, it has the event, and then it calls filter posts. And then it's pulling the event target value, which is whatever is typed in here. And it's only got a 250 millisecond delay. So that's pretty good. And since we're holding all of those posts in the state of the application, I believe there's 10 of them per user, uh, it doesn't have to go back out to the API and we're not waiting there or seeing any animation while we wait. So all I have to do is start typing. But once we start typing, if I continue to type, you won't see a change until I stop typing. So here we go. I'll just type the first couple of words that we see in the first post. And once I stop typing, then it filtered it just to that post. And the same thing when I backspace even. So let's do this again, and we'll go to the second post, and I'll do Q-I-E-S-T, and there we go. And 250 milliseconds is fairly quickly, so if I don't type fast, it might filter twice, but that's okay. So let's try this Q-U-A-S-I space, and there we get that post. Now I'm just guessing even, but you can see how it works and it doesn't really filter until I stop typing. So that's the bonus of debouncing. And I think this is a much better example than just showing how it works with a button. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.